with things happening and all of the concert that got cancelled, uh, you do mention that an interest in visual concerts have developed and grown also as a result of the of the lockdown. Um, so I'm curious to understand how interested are people really in visual concert? Is this something that will continue? And what is it about? Them, that they enjoy and most importantly is the audience willing to pay for it because of everything else on the internet has become for free right and then are they expecting it to be free now and then will the quality be as good lots of questions there but you're absolutely right virtual concerts or live streams <laughs> are a thing that you know 12 months ago we I mean, they existed, but no one ever talked about them because live music and going to live in person was was the thing that people did. So, um, yes, we've we've been tracking virtual concerts and con the consumer reaction to these over the last um, 11 months. And there's there's a lot to unpick. So firstly, are they popular? Yes, they are. Are they mainstream? No, I wouldn't say that they were a mainstream activity. So, you know, one of the questions that we ask is, have you attended a live stream concert in the past two weeks? And about 25% of the US population have. So, you know, it's not a mainstream activity. It's not over half of the population. It's about a quarter of the US population that are engaging with live streaming on some level. And that and live stream, you know, maybe back in March was the perception was, you know, it's someone, an artist at home in their bedroom, just going out on Instagram live or Facebook live or something and just engaging with their fans in that way. But now really um, there's still that happening, but there's there's been this massive evolution of, of live streams. So we have the likes of Dua Lipa with an, you know, a, a, a kind of insanely beautifully produced concert live stream. There's Niall Horan who did a, uh, a, a concert that was live streamed from the Royal Albert Hall. There's Nick Drake who sat, you know, alone in Alexandra Palace in London and sold tickets for, for his live, st live stream event. Um, you know, there's there's beautifully produced and expensive events happening. So um, I think people are engaging. They are popular. People are paying to watch. Um, certainly, there are def you know there are there are more paid live streams than there were at the beginning of of the pandemic. Um, what people are willing to pay is an interesting one. We have asked some questions about that. Um, I don't have a dollar value to give you, but um, but about thirty six percent in our last in our this is data coming from our last wave in January of this year. About thirty six percent of the U.S. population are willing to pay for a virtual concert. So it's you know there there is that uh, that willingness to pay. I think people. Um, will be asked, you know, how do people want to pay for a ticket? Oh, sorry, want to pay for a virtual live stream, and it is by buying a ticket. So that mechanism that they're used to of like, I buy a ticket, I go to a live stream, in the same way that they would go to a live concert, also exists rather than people paying for like giving tips or paying to listen to a particular song. It is that more traditional method that is that is more popular. But um, but really, the public does enjoy them. They enjoy, you know, if they're fans of a particular artist, they like that artist connection. We also we also found that people really like, you know, when an artist does a live stream from their home, mm. and they can kind of get that insight into that artist's life. Like this is what their living room looks like, <laughs> and oh look, there's their dog or something. So that personal connection has really resonated with fans too yeah 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 and and how is the technology uh developing what 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 platforms are you seeing out there that are taking over this um area yes well that's been fascinating there are a lot 
So we've seen traditional, well, we've seen kind of like social media platforms or, or platforms that pre-existed very big players like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, you know, they all have a live feature that artists have been have been very much using. We've seen companies pivot. So there are companies that were in the ticketing space, perhaps, that have pivoted also to hosting live streams or streaming platforms like Mixcloud. They have like a live Mixcloud live where, where people can go live on their platform or Dice, which was a ticketing, which is a ticketing platform. They also kind of sell tickets for live streams and, and kind of are in that space. And then we've seen a lot, a lot of startups. Mm. So new companies springing up, um, all trying to kind of differentiate themselves in different ways. And, and that's quite challenging. So, you know, are they hosting live streams? Are they producing live streams? Are they, you know, there's, there's a, there's a streaming service where you get, you also buy a physical speaker. And I mean, this is very niche, but you buy a physical <laughs> speaker and there is a recording studio that artists will go and play in. And that speaker is perfectly tuned so that what you listen to at home reflects the exact live experience in that studio. You know, there are, there are lots of, there's lots of innovation here. And I think along with that, there will be lots of jockeying for position and um, jockeying for position and acquisitions. So we, we saw a couple of weeks ago that there was a platform called Veeps, which has now had a, an investment from Live Nation. Mm. So I think, you know, all of the big live companies are also looking at that space to figure out what they should be doing with live streaming along with live so but it's positive right because the music industry have been standing very you know how to say steady or very traditional uh, not much have happened uh, and now it gives an opportunity for entrepreneurs and for businesses to pivot to to fresher up and and, and create i think it's going to come out as it has already new amazing entertainment uh, opportunities um Absolutely. I think that, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to have a, a kind of new, exciting area of the industry um, that's developed over the last couple of months. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. I think it's really And positive. the most important thing here is also like trying to create something robust. So, I mean, artists continue getting paid uh, for their work. Yes. And, and yeah. One area that's always been in, in entertainment and, and concert is uh, brand sponsorship. And you guys asked a few questions. Um, if people were more willing to, to pay for the tickets, if they knew that a brand has sponsored the virtual concert, what, what was the result out of that? Um, I'm not sure that we asked exactly if people were more willing to pay for tickets. We definitely asked how do consumers feel about brands mm. that when they align themselves with virtual concerts or, you know, even more so when they, when they align themselves with COVID related charities or mm. support artists in some way. And yeah, ultimately the, the response was, was very positive. So, more so, I would say at the beginning of, of the pandemic, when the need was, or, sorry, the need was more urgent, but it was very top of mind. Um, but yes, when brands align themselves with um, with charity, with supporting, you know, certainly smaller artists, um, then people people think more positively of that brand for that reason. Yes. So this can become an opportunity then for for brands to get Ab into this world. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I was actually talking to um, a label the other day who, you know, they have big artists and those artists have been putting on, you know, very big live streams that are well attended, that sell lots and lots of tickets. Yeah. And they said, you know, we don't, we don't even have a brand that sponsors this event. And, mm. you know, it's a real opportunity for brands, I think, to think about that live streaming space and to align themselves with some of these artists, with some of these players, because they are popular and they are reaching, you know, it's very 
specific demographics as well obviously depending on the artist but you know it's a good way of reaching teenagers you know or or younger people who are generally more hard harder to reach by more traditional advertising as well